Okay, it is 8 p.m., uh, a lot later than I would like to start my run or my workout and run. But, you know, this is actually probably around the time that normal people or like people with like really intense nine to fives in work in cities probably start working out, to be honest. I mean, you get off at five, you sit in traffic for like 30 minutes to an hour, relax at home for a little bit, get some food in you, and then you have to go out to the gym. You probably end up being there around like seven or eight, 8 p.m. So honestly, this is probably normal for most people. <laughs> um, and honestly, it's it's actually pretty normal for me to actually start working out on this. Why am I, I was actually talking about it like it's an unnormal thing, but most of my runs this entire year have been at night in the dark when my family's going to sleep or like when the girls are already to bed and my wife is like getting ready for bed. So, okay, I guess it's just a normal day. Um, I just didn't stress out all day and actually try to fit it in during work or right after work. I just kind of chilled out today. Um, I've been really, really stressed out with work and um, some personal life stuff. So the, when you take in, when you take into account your compounding stress of working out, like the stress it puts on your body, <clears throat> sorry, your body and your mind and everything else, you also have to kind of take into account your life stress, your work stress, and it's all, it's all one stress bucket. So if you have a really, really high stress job, you have a really like up and going freaking work schedule and you're like always in traffic yelling at people all crazy all the time you're gonna get run down i mean stress is like a freaking killer it it's just you know if you're really really stressed out i swear you're gonna be feeling like shit because i know every single time i get to a certain level of stress and when i'm putting too many things on my plate my workouts really really freaking suffer my overall happiness <laughs> is is just like completely lowered and I start I start losing that spark of you know getting excited about runs getting excited about like just chilling out and watching movies getting excited about things that I actually really really enjoy even getting excited about like um going to work and working on projects that I really want to work on it, it's it's that stress that is like just the killer of freaking happiness so you kind of have to take that into account so i just wanted a day just to like relax not really worry about the schedule not really worry about anything else <clears throat> just kind of chill chill the chill chill the f out and go and get ready for a run whenever it feels ready to get ready for a run and that's exactly what i did so this is the pre-run like nutrition just 200 calories of tailwind i usually only do that if i want to try to hit it pretty hard when i end up doing like a workout when i yeah when i end up doing a workout in the run and then i go instantly into like lower body uh i can feel my blood sugar start lowering once i'm around two hours which makes absolute sense because that's usually when during a run it's usually around the two mile mark where I'm going to have to start topping off or, or really start hitting the wall and start topping off on uh, glucose levels and taking in sugar and everything. All those stored glucose is like got pretty much gone and I'm going to have to start taking in uh, nutrition. So typically in runs or races, <clears throat> I'll start taking in a lot of nutrition and start really hitting my nutrition plan an hour into the race. Uh, I'll take a bunch before the race and whatnot, and then let my stomach settle for the first hour. And then I'll start taking in nutrition and hitting up my nutrition plan, which is, you know, the 300 calories every hour, 70 to 90 uh, grams of carbs, and about a liter of water because I sweat so much um, every hour for an ultra marathon. And that's, that's of course, going to shift around um, due to weather, due to terrain, due to effort and everything like that. And you kind of have to, you kind of have to go out into the fire and figure out what's, what works for you. Um, <clears throat> when it's really hot, I sweat so much. And then when it's really cold, I can actually like kind of maintain a, a lot lower um, liquid intake. So I kind of push it back a little bit. I'll, I'll usually only take around like 500 milliliters of water and around 200 calories. So 
definitely a hundred percent. And I always say this, make sure that you're going out there and testing all this stuff and tracking what you're doing. When you're first starting off with like your 50 Ks, your hundred Ks, even the hundred milers, always track how you feel, um, track how you feel and write it down in a journal or how I'd like to do it is make these videos. So then I can really remember exactly how I felt at what mile and shift and change and adapt to those situations when I'm in different races. So that was kind of like a weird tangent on nutrition, of course, like I always get into. Um, but today's run is just going to be a nice, easy, but hard uh, treadmill run. So I'm going to see if my treadmill, my shitty ass Nordic track treadmill, hopefully this thing can make it through my run. I did a little recovery run on it yesterday. And right when I got done with it, it like zapped me. <laughs> it like it zapped me and then it just shut off. So I'm glad that it waited until I was completely done with my run, but still that thing freaking sucks. So we're going to do probably about an hour and a half of running. Uh, we'll do about three to four miles of warm up, and then we'll go into uphill surges. I think I'm going to do some uphill surges. Uh, we'll do about <clears throat> 500. Let's yeah, let's do 500. Let's do 500 feet of elevation gain, and then at a at a at a moderately fast pace, moderate moderately fast. I'll probably be at like a a freaking 15 minute to 12 minute mile pace on the treadmill at about 20, probably like 15 to 20 percent incline, and then we'll do about three to four of those depending on how I feel. So hopefully we can get around 1,500 feet of elevation gain at an increased pace. So those are those hard hill repeats. So we'll do three to four miles and then we'll do 500 feet of elevation gain at a moderate, moderate to high effort. And then we'll finish it off until we get that hour and a half of running or 10 to 11 miles of total running. And then we'll instantly get off when the legs are nice and smoked, nice and destroyed. And we'll finally get our, <coughs> Man, sorry. I swear to God, I'm going through puberty again because my voice cracks so much. And then after that run, we'll go over to the home gym and we'll do our leg workout that we were talking about doing. So we'll do pretty heavy deadlifts if the legs aren't completely smoked. We'll do step ups and then we'll have our floater workout depending on how we feel, depending if anything's cramping or going crazy or if we actually have the time. We'll do back squats or goblet squats. Um, and then potentially we'll finish off with like just a little tiny bit of core. Uh, I did smoke it a little bit yesterday, the, my core, but maybe we'll just do more of a stabilization type core workout where it's a lot of planks, a lot of like really tight holding positions instead of like motion, like doing sit-ups and all that jazz. So that's the plan for today. Nice treadmill run, lower, nice treadmill run with some uphill surges and then a lower body workout and then we'll be taking in and this is this is definitely something that i'm going to be working on taking in um nutrition during these these shorter runs or these normal runs usually usually what will happen is like i don't want to drink anything because i usually ate dinner or anything and then i'll get done working out and i'll drink like 500 milliliters of water and be like that's good for that i've been working out for two freaking hours 500 milliliters of water is good and i'll go to sleep and it feels like i'm freaking hung over because i'm just completely dehydrated so i'm really focusing on <laughs> i know i know I, I i feel like this isn't something that i should be struggling with you know four years into this ultra marathon little journey but hey man it is what it is. I have to figure, <laughs> I have to figure, I have to always remind myself to freaking hydrate and properly, uh, like properly get in the fuel that I need during these runs, especially at night. So I don't wake up destroyed. My recovery is better and everything's better. I mean, for the past week, I've just been feeling like crap. And I really think it's because of the stress one and also because I've been pretty freaking dehydrated because I've been running late at night and I haven't been really carrying too much uh, nutrition with me. And then when I get done, I'll drink water, but not enough water to replenish or somewhat replenish what I actually lost during the run. 
So that's going to be a big focus coming in. I'm going to start prioritizing. <laughs> I'm going to start prioritizing sleep because I've just been, you know, kind of getting amped up from these runs and not being able to like settle and just playing on TikTok until like freaking 1 a.m. and then waking up at 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. And just getting like six hours of sleep, which is not freaking enough for me personally. I need around seven to eight hours of sleep and then I feel good. If anything under seven hours for me for some reason, I just feel like complete hell. So I'm going to start prioritizing sleep, trying to get at least seven hours, hopefully eight or more, but at least eight bare minimum. And then also freaking hydration. <laughs> All right, we are on the treadmill. I am, uh, I got distracted with some uh, anime. So of course my warm up went a little bit longer than I expected, but we're gonna get the work in. We're gonna do something slightly different because when I was thinking about the workout, I was uh, kind of thinking about what I was doing earlier in the year when I was getting ready for the Grindstone 100, where there's a lot of mountain climbs. So it's really long, slow, grinding up and I was doing those 500 feet of elevation gain grinds up and then I topped out at a thousand elevation gain at you know a pretty slow pace but just getting my body ready for those really long grinds up this race the 100k that I'm getting ready for it's pretty flat because it's in the DC area so a lot of it's like very oscillating elevation gain. So there's not gonna be like really big mountain climbs or anything like that. I just kind of got to get ready and get my body tough enough for shorter inclines and then harsh declines. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do maintain, probably for this first set, just maintain the pace that I'm running, pump it up to about 10% grade and go for half a mile. And I'm gonna do that four to five times, depending on the effort, probably just four. And if the speed is feeling good, if the incline is feeling good, I'll just keep it at that. If I want a little bit more, instead of increasing the incline more than 10%, I'll increase the speed. So, it's just kind of like working on somewhat of the grind up, uh, the foot turnover while going uphill, and then just trying to maintain a, a pace and a heart rate as inclines come and go. Right after each interval, I'll probably do a quarter mile to a half mile runoff in a decline, which will be at a faster pace. So I'll pump it up to like, I'll go up maybe like 0.5 of miles per hour. So right now I'm running at like a seven on the treadmill and I'll like, this is, this is awesome. Also, this is, this paces and everything, they make, they're completely different from treadmill to treadmill. Right now I'm at like a seven miles per hour or a seven on this treadmill. And then when I'm doing the decline, I'll probably go to like a 7.5. So not terribly fast, not like sprinting or anything, just getting the body back used to like grinding uphill. So at six miles, we'll get this going on the first interval and we'll see how these uphill little uphill sprints or long grinds, I guess a half a mile is pretty long, but we'll see how it feels on this first iteration. So let me get this warm up done. We'll start at six miles. I'll catch you guys back once we're getting ready for that first interval. All right, we are about 0.2 miles away from our first interval. Um, I just want to talk about what I'm taking in as this runs going on. So this bottle has 200 calories of tailwind and it has some electrolytes in it, tailwind, and I'm just gonna be taking in like half of it. So about hundred calories just to top off what I took before this run. I'll take half of it uh, before the intervals start. And then once the intervals end, 
I'll take the rest of it to get my way or to get me through the actual weightlifting. <laughs> so I probably could take a lot more calories. I just really don't feel like, I just really don't feel like it for some reason right now. Um, if I do get thirsty, um, I'm going to be forcing myself, not forcing myself, but I'm going to be drinking just like clean water out of this bottle and I'll probably refill it like one or two times. These are 500 milliliter bottles. So I'll end up taking about maybe a, a liter of clean water and then 500 milliliters, 200 calories of tailwind. Honestly, since I did the pre-workout or the pre-workout like little intake, it'll be 400 calories total, four scoops of tailwind and one liter of water with a liter or a liter and a half of clean water. So that's what I'm taking for this workout. Hopefully it's enough. All right, so we got our first interval coming up and we're just pumping up the incline to 10%, trying to maintain the same pace. So I'm probably gonna be zipping in, dipping into zone three. So I'm just gonna shut up and let this one go. So half mile. Uh, so that's a little bit, <laughs> that was a little bit too hard. So I'm just gonna bump down the incline. I started zipping it. I definitely started going a little bit more higher heart rate than I wanted. So I just bumped it down to 6% incline. I'm gonna have to work my way back up to these uh, hill repeats So. Just dumping it down a little bit. We'll finish this off. But interval number one is complete. I'm just uh, gonna rest a little bit as the treadmill goes down to uh, minus 6%. So I can do the quick little, <laughs> oh man, that roasted me. So uh, yeah, I'm 100% gonna have to be cognizant and focus on my uphill, my uphill running and my hill repeats because they got, they, they're they gone. I mean, I was doing that work, I was doing this workout before the grindstone, like really easily. And uh, that right there, I thought I was about to pass the fuck out. So it might be because I'm like tired. It might be because of a lot of things, 
but man, <laughs> I was doing that so easily before the grindstone, which it's really just mess muscle memory, getting those muscles back up and firing for different types of stimulus. Like if you really look at ultra marathon, there's like flat courses, there's mountainous courses, there's no man or last man left alive or last man. Yeah, last man standing. And every single one of those, you train completely differently. You utilize your uh, body mechanics completely differently. You feel completely differently. So it's to expect, it's to be expected that not everything after a big race is gonna be exactly how it was after you took a couple weeks off. You took all that damage from the 100 miler. So that's why you kind of go up and then down and then up and then down. Where I've always gotten in trouble, where I've always gotten hurt was when I got done with the race and then two weeks later, I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna run 100 miles where I peaked out on for the Grindstone 100. And I always get hurt because I don't give my body enough time to <clears throat> go back into training. And that's just me personally. Um, you know, there's some freaks out there. There's people with years and years of more experience that can actually do that. But for me personally, I have to do the, the toe in the pool, then the legs in, and then jump in, not just completely jump back into training like some people can. So let me get this decline little runoff in, and then we'll hit our second set of uh, intervals. Uh, I think I'm gonna pretty much just, just cut it from there. I'm just gonna be pretty much suffering on the treadmill for the next 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so. And then we'll jump right into the lower body workout. But man, yeah, that was a, that was a really quick reminder. Hey bro, take it slow build your way back up to the training that you're used to and don't just jump right back in because shoo i just almost dropped out my anus just almost freaking fell on this freaking treadmill and splattered against the wall and I look into that dark hole get sucked into it to an alternate universe i'm just floating around in butthole space so that almost happened to me i'm gonna turn on some freaking anime enjoy my last three intervals and then get a good lower body workout in. All right, so let's go. Let's get this fucking run done. Put in some work. Wow. We are on our last set. Well, I'm gonna split the last set up to uh, two parts where I'm gonna do the same thing. 6% incline at the regular speed and uh, for a quarter mile because that last set got a little sketchy. Um, <laughs> I barely made it through the half mile and I had to jump off because I, I was huffing and puffing. So instead of like just, you know, having to jump off in the middle of the set, in the middle of the interval, I'm just gonna split it into two shorter intervals. And uh, another thing that I saw when I was checking myself out <laughs> in the camera, as annoying as that sounds, um, uh, I've noticed that, especially on that first set, I was really getting tight when I started getting tired. And when your shoulders go up and your arms get really tight, you kind of contract or like compress your diaphragm and it's a lot harder to get a full uh, breath of air and be very effective and efficient with your breathing and you're making all this blood go to your upper body because you're like kind of squeezing it in. So I'm gonna have to remember and remind myself on these last couple sets to relax, relax and all the pressure should be in the lower body and not in the upper body. Relax my shoulders, relax my arms, and relax my breathing because 
it was getting pretty intense. Just, <laughs> just absolutely dying. So I'm going to relax a little bit more, probably for like another point, one of a mile, <laughs> isn't much at all. And then uh, hit that first quarter mile set. And hopefully it'll look a little bit better than those last three sets. Really focusing on, especially when I'm on the treadmill, I'm really focusing on form, foot turnover, and just relaxing my upper body as I run and try to breathe efficiently and effectively. So I have uh, a little bit more and we'll hit this first quarter mile set. Quarter mile set, number one. Quarter mile interval, number one. All right, let's go. All right, All right. much better, much better. A little bit more controlled. Breathing's a little bit better. And uh, definitely didn't get as tired as I did on that third set. I mean, I almost jumped off at a quarter mile on the third set. So a lot better trying to control the breathing, control the effort. That's something I always said in the military, you control your breath, you control your mind, you control your body. So first things first, Oh, control the fucking breathing. Right. So, we'll finish up this last set. Then we'll head over to the lower body. The lift is underway. Uh, this is about, yeah, this is the third set. Just kind of going light because I got absolutely worked <laughs> on that run. Uh, even that last quarter mile. <sighs> That last quarter mile interval, I got pretty destroyed on. So taking it a little bit easy and it's also pretty late at night. So it's like 10, 20 right now. Um, so the, everybody's sleeping upstairs. So I have to be pretty quiet and I have to control the, the dropping of the weight. So it doesn't make a loud crash and babies wake up and I get in trouble. So being, being, trying to be pretty quiet on these deadlifts, um, and staying relatively light. I think my children stole my clips. So I guess I just have to be extra careful to stay level on these deadlifts. <laughs> uh, so let's get this third set in. Basically, I'm just going for uh, reps of 10, four sets with increasing weight um and then if i go lower i go lower you know so typically i'll try to shoot for 10 um after runs i'm not really like building trying to build any strength I'm morally working on like endurance so keeping the reps pretty pretty high uh for me <laughs> you know so i'll aim for 10 but if i can get eight i'll be happy with that if i get six i'll be Kind of disappointed, but still pretty happy after how that ran, how that run in those intervals went. Um, I definitely have a little bit of a a little bit of a bone to pick with myself on that run because you know I think I just got a little bit cocky, but we'll talk about that after this whole workout session. So right now we're just going to be doing a couple deadlifts. And then we'll go into some step ups and then we'll go, yeah, we're just going to call it that. So deadlifts and step ups, and then I'll do a little bit of core. So let's hit this last set. I'm going to do it without straps this time. The finger, the broken finger seems to be getting a little bit better. So let's see how the grip is when we have 225 on the bar. Um, all right, let's go. Stop talking. Uh, man. 
I'm all fucking tired. Fuck it. <sighs> My nose is all runny and shit. Sorry for the sniffling and shit. Oh, yeah, the finger's still a little messed up. All right, so probably we'll go just a little bit heavier for the last set, but don't want to push it too much and don't want to take too much noise or make too much noise. So really trying to work on endurance, make sure that I'm engaging my glutes on these deadlifts because in the past, I have been really, really quad dominant. Um, my quads are shrinking. <sighs> my, qu my quads are shrinking quite a bit. I mean, like a couple years ago, I was just purely like powerlifting, uh, only really going for strength. And, man, I swear to God, I'm going through puberty. <sighs> only really going for like strength and power. And my quads were like giant. Uh, I was living in California and it's hilly as fuck there. So every single run was like uphill. <laughs> and then I was just like deadlifting a lot and squatting a lot and my quads were like freaking massive. And now they're like pretty skinny to be honest. I mean, like <laughs> they're still pretty cut and but they're pretty lean. Like these were like out here back, back in the day. So it's probably better aesthetically. It looked cool, but functionally my knees always hurt. You know, my knees always hurt. My calves were always sore because they were way too dominant. So hopefully I can get them back up a little bit bigger, but then hopefully the hamstrings and the glutes and everything grows back in unison. So it's a fully functioning machine instead of just quads, just quadding up the quadding up the road. So let's hit this last set of deadlifts and then we'll go right into step ups. Step ups, I don't know if you guys can see me because the GoPro and the angle is a little weird, but step ups is uh, something that I just recently started putting back into my workout rotation. I mean, I haven't really been working out anyways, but I haven't really did, I haven't really done too many step ups in the past. Um, just because eh, in the military I did, but that was a long, that was a long time ago. So <laughs> I'm kind of putting it back in to start re-engaging re the glutes. And this is a really, really good workout to engage the glutes, especially for running. Cause it's almost the same like generative force that you're really pushing off and engaging those glutes really well. <clears throat> so don't need much weight for these. Just really the weight that can really get the good squeeze inside of your glute. So I do 30 pounds and I'll go up. I, I mean, I usually will get a little bit more weight, but I'm like absolutely smoked right now. So basically when you're doing the step ups, you want to think about driving up the step instead of launching yourself up the step or pushing yourself up the step. You're driving down on the step and pushing yourself up with your glute in or up into the air, if that makes sense. So all the pressure should be on whatever leg is on the step and you shouldn't push off of your bottom leg. All your power should be driving down and up on the step leg, if that makes any sense. So a slight lean forward, same or similar to your running form. So slight lean forward, you're not pushing your butt out. Nice, tight, straight body form. Your hips are in line. 
and everything's slightly leaning forward, but your body is still straight and just pushing up, right? And if you see me slowing down, it's because I can start feeling my lower body or my my planted body, the, the foot, not body, but the foot that's on the ground starting to push off. So just kind of resetting, making sure that that foot's not pushing off or pushing off the least amount as possible. And then nice and up. So 10, 10 each leg. I have no idea how many I did on that first leg, but whatever. And if you want more effort, then you can either do a higher step or you can put on more weight. I have, I think I did 10, but I'm just gonna turn this off. I'll do a little bit of core after that. I don't wanna really film it, uh, just cause I'm fucking dying and I'll, I'm linking boogers all over the place. So I'll probably do planks, uh, one minute on, one minute off for 30 seconds off for five minutes. And then I'll do uh, flutter kicks for lower body and maybe some crunches, but just really quick hit of the hit of the core and that's it. So let's finish this workout and then we'll do a nice sign off. Workout is, <laughs> I guess, complete. I mean, man, it feels like this whole week I've just kind of been struggling through all of my workouts. So this is kind of what I was talking about during the weightlifting section of the workout. And I feel like me personally, I need a gut check every month because <laughs> I just start getting cocky for whatever reason. I have one or two good runs and I'm like, oh man, I could do what pros do. or I could do a crazy workout that I saw on YouTube. And then I go out and try to do it. Or the, my biggest thing is, oh, I can do the workout that I did when I was peaking my training for a hundred mile race three weeks after a hundred mile race. So like I just start getting cocky and I try to do a work. <laughs> I try to do a workout that I didn't work my, my body back up to. And that's exactly what happened today. So, <laughs> so I tried to do a workout that I did during the peak training of the grindstone 100 and I paid for it. I mean, I got destroyed on like the second and third interval of that run. And the rest of the workout was just pretty much a struggle fest. <laughs> so my cocky, cocky, cocky ass bullshit. I think I just need to fucking sit there while I'm taking my pre-run nutrition and just remind myself where I'm at. Maybe I need to like write down my schedule, write down my full schedule and look at exactly where I'm at. Because lately, I've kind of just been going off a of feel, going off of what I feel like my body wants and what what I want to do during a run. But I think I need to start scheduling it a little bit more. Not like to the T exactly what I want to do, but look back at what I was doing when I was peaking out uh, for the Grindstone 100 and then see where I'm at now and then write down a schedule so I can not overtrain, <laughs> not push it too much. And then also not like under train because, you know, I do have my lazy points. I, I do have days where I just, you know, don't want to do shit and, you know, sit on the couch and fucking play video games and drink beer, which 
some, t- some days you need it, but if you're taking way too many days off and just kind of giving into the the comfort of the couch and the comfort of a couple beers at night, you know, you're not going to be able to get your goals done. You're not going to be, you're going to be, able, you might be able to get your goals done, but yeah, you're going to suffer on the course. So I think I just need to be a little bit more tactical, <laughs> tact- tactful. I think I just need to be a little bit more tactful and scheduled on my running for next week and my workouts for next week. So I don't run into my own cocky, cocky bullshit and punch myself in the fucking face because it's, it's always me. I, I'm, I'm my worst enemy and YouTube is pro- <laughs> and YouTube is probably my second worst enemy because I see these ultra runners and I like to watch a lot of um, marathon runners and triathlon runners on YouTube and they do some crazy ass workouts and their style of running is a lot different than ultra marathon because they're purely or not, not purely but almost their entire race is going to be in like upper zone two zone three they're going to be threshold running for 26 miles and that's what they're that's what they're training their body to do is stay at threshold for three hours straight or four hours straight or two i mean now it's two hours and 35 fucking seconds they're sticking at fucking threshold because you know those psychopaths are just like burning the road and running historic times <sighs> which is fucking awesome but i think i need to you know calm a little bit down stop being so cocky remind myself exactly where i'm in in my training and work myself back up to that training um so that's that's pretty much the takeaway for today is make sure I'm not being cocky in my workouts, especially for these run workouts. Uh, I tend to try to push it a little bit harder on the treadmill because I feel like it's not it's not real running, even though you know if you're if you're working and your heart rate's getting up, it's it's running. Um, <laughs> and number two, what's which, which is what we were talking about first is hydration. Just throughout the day, drinking a lot more, hydrating during the run since I'm running at night. So I'm not going to bed dehydrated and waking up even more dehydrated because, you know, you, when you're sleeping, you're not taking in water. So you're, you know, getting six to seven hours, six to seven hours of not drinking water. Or if you're actually sleeping properly, eight hours, nine hours of not drinking water. So you're extremely dehydrated. And I, I've, I have been very, very dehydrated. I've been waking up and pissing very 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 yellow piss and just feeling like i'm hungover so definitely have to up up my hydration game uh just overall volume of liquid throughout the day and then ensuring that i'm taking proper electrolytes not just eating a bunch of salty food and be like oh i have a little (laughs) i ate a bunch of tortillas and mexican food so i have a lot of electrolytes it's like yeah you have a lot of sodium but what about everything else so taking a proper amount of electrolytes, taking a higher volume of liquid throughout the day, and then not being a cocky fuck and actually tactfully going into these workouts with somewhat of a plan. So I should be planning these out a little bit more. And I'm starting to, <clears throat> I'm starting the up curve of my training. So I'm going to have to start really getting more detailed with my workouts and figuring out how to fit in more runs during the week so i can get that higher mileage so that's it that's the end of the workout day remember be tactful you know drink your water and always communicate so you can get those workouts done be tactful with your freaking schedule and your communication so you can get everything done in these short days that we have when you have a full-time job and a family and kids and blah 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 blah. but make sure you're going out there getting your work in chipping away becoming an average savage we can fucking get this done. I know it seems crammed and crazy and hectic, hectic, chaotic, but if you plan enough, if you're dedicated enough, if you're willing to sacrifice some of the more comfortable things in life, you can get this shit done. So get out there, chip away, become an average savage. Let's fucking do it. Let's fucking go.